7.1 is on arithmetic sequences. So this is the start of a new chapter called discrete functions. And discrete functions are totally different from anything you've done before. For some of you, that will be a hooray. No more transformations. This is totally different math. And if you've been struggling with the functions, this may be your chance to redeem yourself and pull up your grade. So follow along. This is not really difficult. It's a little bit of logic stuff. If you have trouble with logic, um, just pay attention. I'm sure you can figure these out and you'll do really well on, on sequences and series. It's just logic. Okay, so let's think like something new and, and we can do this. You're all capable of this, I'm sure. So an arithmetic sequence says that each subsequent term, subsequent means the one following it, is found by adding the same number. You could be adding or subtracting. So you could be adding a positive or adding a negative number to the preceding term. That's the term before it. it um, the common difference is the number obtained by subtracting any term from the previous term. Okay, that's all kinds of gobbledygook. Let's take a look at what it actually means. You're usually asked to find what is called the general term. The general term is a term that describes any term in this sequence. So when I say TN, as in the nth term, it's saying that what if I asked you for the thousandth term or the fiftieth term or the two millionth term? You can use this equation that you're going to develop to find any term in this sequence, including the first one, once you get it set up. So the important things here are that this is your first term, this is your second term, and way out here is my nth term. So it could be any number. So I'm saying the nth term is a, and a here is the same as t1, your first term is a plus n, well here's the n that I'm looking for, minus 1 times d, which is your common difference. Okay, so for this little one, we'll do a couple of these and you'll catch on quickly. So for this little sequence, 2, 9, 16, the first term, my a value, is going to be 2. Right? It's the first term in the sequence. And sometimes they don't give you the first one. We'll look at those in a bit. So hang in there. We'll take all the bases here. So when a is 2 here for the first term, and the common difference is 9 minus 2, which is 7, right? Or if I said 16 minus 9, they're both equal to 7. So 7 is my common difference. Now all you have to do is plug that into this equation. So that means that the nth term is going to be 2 plus n minus 1. We're keeping the n here because we're talking about the nth term times 7. And then you just expand this little side over here. And you would get um, 7n minus 5. So this is what we call the general term for this sequence. Of course, they're going to be different depending on the sequence that you're dealing with. So now that I have this set up, I could ask you to find me any term. If I said, uh, what, what is the first term? You can check. Well, you know it's 2, but if I put in a 1 here, 7 minus 5 is 2. What is the second term? 14 minus 5, which is 9. What is the third term? 21 minus 15, which is 16. So you can find any term in your sequence now that you've identified this general term for this particular sequence. So let's go on to the second one here. 7, 2, minus 3, minus 8. What is a? Well, that's easy. a is the first term, 7. What is the common difference, our d value here? So you have to do this minus this one. You're not subtracting this way because you want to know what did you do to go from 7 to 2. From 7 to 2, you subtracted 5. From 2 to minus 3, you subtracted 5. So my D is minus 5. So the general term here now, I'm going to just plug all, plug all those values in. So 7 plus N minus 1 times minus 5. And just simplify this left side of the equation. Minus 5N plus 5. 7 and 5 is 12 minus 5N. 
So if I wanted to know, let's check our third term. So 12 minus 5 times 3, 15. 12 minus 15, minus 3. So I'm right on. What is the 15th term? So I say, what is the 15th term? So now that I have my general term here, general term means the term that defines any term in my sequence, I can just say, well, that's 12 minus 5 times 15. So that's 12 minus 75, which is minus 63. Okay, so you get the idea. It's pretty simple, pretty basic. So this is a formula you want to think about. And of course, if I asked for um, term 1, 1 minus 1 would be 0. And 0 times d is 0, which gives me a. Or if I said, what is the first term here? 7 minus 5, 2. Yes, that should be the same as this one here. 12 minus 5, 7. Oh, yes, my first term was 7. Okay, so that's that's the easy part. Of course, things get a little more difficult. With example number 3, I'm giving you the 7th term is 53, the 11th term is 97, and I want you to find the 100th term. So you're probably thinking, well, I don't know what the A is, and I don't know what the D is. And that's what you should be thinking, right? I don't know what those terms are. I only have the 7th and the 11th. But what I do know is that this is linear. Right? I'm adding the same amount every time from 7 to 11. So how many times did I add a number to go from 7th term to the 11th term? Well, that's simple math. 11 minus 7. So four times I added some number to 53 to get 97. So you could play around with that for a while or you could use your head and say well if I have 97 and 53 that means I added 44 44 values to 53 so 44 divided by 4 is going to give me the common difference so d is equal to 11 so it says that I added 11 four times right 53 64, 75, 86, 97. So I've got the 11th, D is my 11th, uh, sorry, my common difference is 11th. Now that didn't answer the question. The question said, what is the 100th term? So because I have the 7th and the 11th, let's go to the um, 11th term is 97. So I'm going to say, um, the hundredth term, which is what I want to find, could be the eleventh term, which is 97, plus, now I have to add 11, how many times from T11 to T100? So T100, um, from T11 to T100, that's 89 terms, right? I'm just subtracting between 11 and 100. There are 89 terms. So that means I had to have added 11 89 times to T11 because 11 and 89 is going to give me my 100th term. And if you do all that, you should get 1076. Okay, so that's one method of solving this question. The other method involves... Um, Elimination. So grade 10 math, two equations, two unknowns. Let's try that one. Maybe it'll be the one that you like better. So if I said the seventh term, T7, is going to be, well, I have 53, right? That's the value of T7 equals A. I don't know what A is. I know what N is. So um, N is a, a 7 minus 1 times D, which I don't know. So all I'm using is a general form, Tn equals A plus N minus 1 times D. Write these things out every chance you get. It'll help you to, um, to make that firm uh, connection in your brain. So 53 is 11 plus 6D. Okay, so I'm stuck there. I'm going to go to T11. What's T11 equal to? Well, it says it's 97. And that would be, still don't know what A is, but I know that N is 11 minus 1 times D. 
So 97 is equal to a plus 10d. So now I have two equations with two unknowns, and that should bring back some very fond memories from grade 10, solving two systems of equations, or a system of equations with two equations. So remember doing that, so you would line them up, a plus 10d, and right underneath it, I'm going to put the other equation, a plus 6d. So if I subtract these equations, as you can see, I'm going to know what d is. Because if I subtract, my a's will be eliminated. That's called elimination. Remember, elimination from grade 10. So if I subtract these equations, I would get 97 minus 53 is 44 equals a minus a, they're gone, and 10 minus 6 is 4, and guess what d is equal to? Just what we said up above, 11. Now I can also now figure out what a is. So now I'm going to solve for a by using one of these equations, your choice. Um, I think I'll use this one. So let's say 53 is equal to a plus 6 times 11. So 53 is equal to a plus 66, and a is going to be equal to negative 13. Okay, so now I've got a is negative 13, and d is 11, and now I can find the general term. So this is a little more tedious way of doing it. Uh, some people see it better this way, so I'm showing you both. So let's write the general term. So tn equals, my a is minus 13, plus n minus 1 times d, which is 11. So now if I want the hundredth term, I say, oh, what's the hundredth term? And that would be uh, 99 times 11. And if you do this math, you're going to get 1076, just like we did in the previous example. So there's your choice. You can figure out the difference. How many times have you added something? So you had four additions, um, and you figure out how, how far you've gone between those two terms, divide it out to find the d value, and then you can uh, figure out how many more additions of 11 do you need to make to get to 100 or like I said you could do this knowing T7, T11 and using elimination from your grade 10 math. Maybe we're really good at that and you like that one. Okay so moving on we're going to talk a little bit about something called the recursive formula. Now everyone every time I've taught this students kind of freak out recursive oh what does recursive mean? This is such an easy concept that if you just spend 10 minutes reading this over and figuring it out you're going to you're going to find it very easy it's it's not a difficult concept at all so it says it relates the general term of a sequence to the previous term or terms okay so maybe that doesn't resonate with you at all but stay, let's take a look at what we have here so we have t1 t2 t3 t4 and dot 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 and I want a recursive formula for this. So what this says is that some term Tn is going to be Tn minus 1. So that's the term before it. So you can't talk about the first term in this. You have to talk about T2. So I can talk about um, the second term is the first term plus 7. Or the third term is the second term plus 7. So what I want is, I want to say the nth term is the term before it plus 7. And then you have to give some rules. You can't just say this because this means nothing without saying this. The first term is 4. And importantly, n has to be greater than 1. For all your recursive formulas, for all recursive formulas, you have to have n greater than 1 because you can't talk about a second term if you don't know what the first term is, right? And that's what recursive is meaning. It's talking about the previous term. 
So 11 is the previous term plus 7. So if I said what is the um, second term, so you'd say t2, for instance. So if I said t2 is t, 2 minus 1, which is t1. So this says the second term is the first term plus 7. Yeah, it is. And the third term would be the second term plus 7, because I put in a 3 here. So that's talking about it in a recursive way. Okay, let's try this one. 32, 26, 20, 14. Okay, so start out by writing your TN. TN is the term before it. So I said, what is 26? How do I get to 26 from this term, the term before it? So 26 is the first term minus 6, right? So the second term is the first term minus 6. Where, now this is where you have to, you have to make some statements here. You can't just leave this. You say the first term is 32 and, like I said, n is greater than 1. And n is always an element of, of um, natural numbers, right? We can't put in the zero term and we can't put in a half term. That's either 1, 2, 3, or 4. No decimals. So let's just, I'm just going to write this here. I don't know if your teacher wants you to write this, but n is an element of natural numbers. Natural numbers? What's a natural number? That's like 1, 2, 3, dot, 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 right? What you learn, you're counting numbers, maybe, is a good way to describe those. Okay, so that's what recursive means. So just write, say, oh yeah, the nth term is a term before it, take away 6. Or n, the second term is the first term plus 7. That's where you want to think about it and then write it. Up. And don't forget this part. I, so many times my students would, would write up this part of the recursive formula and not give these statements, which are critical for the understanding of what this actually means. Okay, let's move on to a couple of homework questions and leave it at that for the night. Determine the number of terms in the sequence. Ooh, the number of terms. I give you minus 10, minus 14, minus 18, and I give you the last term. And you have to tell me how many terms are there in this? How many terms? So what do we know? That's what you want to say. Okay, so this is T1, T2, T3, and this is my Tn, where I'm solve, solve for n, right? I want to know what is this nth number? What is this number here? So let's write down what we know. Always write down what you know. Always start somewhere. Like, don't just sit there looking at it. Try something. Write something down. You'd be surprised if you on your test wrote out that you knew what A was and that you know what the D value is, that your teacher will probably give you some marks for it because you're showing that you've understood some of it. So what is D here? If I went from minus 10 to minus 14. So what you're supposed to do mathematically, I like to just think about it in my head. If I went from minus 10 to minus 14, what did I do? I subtracted four or Mathematically, you'd say minus 4 minus minus 10 is minus 14 plus 10, which of course is minus 4. Same thing, right? So I've got my A, my D, and this time I know what the nth term is. So I'm solving for N. Okay, so let's go to the general term, Tn equals A plus N minus 1 times D. Now hopefully you've got that figured out already. And now all you have to do is plug it in and solve for n. So my nth term is this, minus 138. I want to know what number in the lineup is it, right? I know what tn is. tn is this number. My a is minus 10 plus, and I'm solving for n, minus 1 times minus 4. Okay, so we've got a little bit of math to do here. So let's throw this over here for now. So I add 10 to this side, that's minus 128. And I expand this, so I have minus 4n plus 4. So I subtract 4 over here, minus 132 is minus 4n. And now I divide by minus 4 to get my n. Let's bring that over here. So n is equal to, how many times I go into there? 
4 into 13 goes 3, and what, 33. So n is the 33rd term. So if this was the end of my sequence, which it obviously is because there's no dot, dot, dot after it, so you'd say, therefore, there are 33 terms in this sequence. Ta-da! And you're very happy. Okay, determine A, D, and Tn, where T8 is minus 49 and T15 is minus 84. Okay, so what are you going to do? We could do it the same way. This is um, like that other example that I did. I don't know if it's on the back side of this. Where we said, oh, how many, how many times? Well, I can't find it. How many, how, what is the spread from here? From 8 to 15. Well, 7, right? 15 minus 8. So I'm going to do 15 minus 8 is equal to 7. And I went from minus 49 to minus 84. So I subtracted a bunch of numbers, right? Because they got more negative. So what's minus 84 minus minus 49? So that's minus 84 plus 49. And that's going to give you minus 35. Am I still on the page? Yes. Okay, so I have my... my um, minus 35 and I went seven times from here to here. So seven times from seven to minus 35, that means what's minus 35 divided by seven. So that's minus five. So I'm subtracting five. So from here to here, I subtracted five seven times to get this number. Okay, so I know what my D is. D is minus five. D equals minus 5. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my eighth term here. And I'm going to say, I'm going to use my equation. Tn equals A plus N minus 1 times D. And I'm going to use the information I have right here. T8 is minus 49. So a lot of times this is just, you know, like, play around with it. Try it. Try something. Try something. Try anything. Because look. Once I know this, I know 8. This is my 8. My n number is 8. So I get 8 minus 1. And I already know what d is. I said it was going to be minus 5. So now that I have that, I'll just finish the math here. 8 minus 1 is 7 times minus 5 is minus 35. I'm going to add 35 to the other side. That gives me minus 15 for a. So now I have A, and I have, um, I have A, and I have D, and now I need the, the nth term. So what is my nth term going to be? So I get minus 5, A is, I don't know what I did wrong, this is 14, right? Thank you. Someone said in my head, Miss Havrat, that's wrong. It's got to be 14. Okay, so my Tn equals A plus N minus 1 times D. Now all you have to do is plug in what you know. You've got your A is minus 14 plus N minus 1 times D. Sometimes it's a good idea to box things like that when you're doing a test. It helps you find it and also really helpful for your teacher when she's trying to mark or he so minus 5n plus 5 and that gives me minus 14 plus 5 is minus 9 minus 5n and there's my tn so i've done all the things you need to do just like that okay i think that's all i wanted to do let me just flip this over if i see oh no it's blank okay so that's it for today's lesson on arithmetic sequences and I hope you found it helpful. Give me a thumbs up. Give me some encouragement, man. I'm encouraging you. Keep going. We're almost done.